Hello everyone and welcome back to Lucky Loaders 15 where I'll be giving you a slightly different um, theme tomorrow. I'm going to be giving you the selections at Wincanton Racecourse tomorrow and I'll also give two selections that will be running at Aintree tomorrow which have got a very good impressive card on. That's really exciting action going on there. So I'll give two selections after I run through the card at Wincanton. You might be asking why am I giving you some Wincanton selections? Well, some of you might know, I kind of now work at Wincanton as a social media reporter, which you can follow my work on Facebook and Twitter on their official pages. That's the Wincanton Racecourse Twitter and Facebook pages. You can check out there and see all the photos and videos that I upload uh, throughout the day. But I thought I'll go through the card tomorrow because... I didn't actually do it last time out, I kind of made some private notes and actually I've got to admit, last time out it was quite tricky really. It was definitely the bookmaker's day uh, when I uh, worked my first ever day at Wincant and I'm there tomorrow and I'm feeling a lot more confident about sifting the way through the card tomorrow and hopefully bringing up some winners so I'll go through those in a minute. Just want to quickly reflect on how today's selections ran. Now I didn't upload a Lucky Loaders Each Way Lucky 15 uh, vlog for today's horse racing in the format of that Each Way Lucky 15. We were over on Twitter today and we did uh, the load a lot where I picked uh, three horses that I thought would run well. And to be fair, I was pretty pleased with how they all ran. They all ran pretty respectively in the end. We had three places in the end. At Cheltenham, we backed uh, Robins Firth, which I came in fourth place. And because there were 16 or more runners, it meant that bookmakers would be paying out four places. It placed, we got it at seven to one. So that wasn't a bad start there. Then we backed to Raheen House uh, at Newbury in the group three uh, race, finished in second place at the end. We backed it at 30 13 to 2 so we were definitely in the frame a lot today and then in the race and post trophy I thought we were going to win we backed Roaring Lion we got it at 9 to 1 and in the end it was Saxon Warrior that prevailed winning for Aidan O'Brien and Ryan Moore and that took the record uh, for Aidan O'Brien you probably know that he beat uh, Bobby Frankel's record of the most group ones one in a year so that was really good for Aidan O'Brien and a good uh like kind of advert really for the sport we can do with people like Aidan O'Brien promoting our sport so well done to him but like I said I'm going to be giving you my predictions for um, tomorrow's horse race in action at Wincanton and we're going to be starting tomorrow um, in the one o'clock the first race is there and we're going for a horse called Gibbs Bay it's currently three to one with bookmakers at the moment i believe that is the staff nap for the day so um if you fancy that one like i do i think it's definitely probably the most strongest and likeliest contender to win tomorrow i thought three to one wasn't a bad price it is trained by paul nichols the local trainer to win canton and bryony first who um he's been using quite a few times recently will be uh, taking this one She's been riding really well for him, actually. She rode a winner at Cheltenham on Friday with uh, Black Corton, I think it was. So um, she gets on well with Paul Nichols' horses. He gives her good opportunities, and I thought Gibbs Bay could give him a winner tomorrow. Now, this horse made its handicap debut last time out at Wincanton, where it nearly put in a good performance and won, but it lost to Artie Campbell of Bernard Llewellyn. And I think it could definitely come on for that uh, run last time out. I thought it probably was the most scopiest horse in in the race and definitely the one that maybe the handicapper hasn't got yet and could definitely go pretty well tomorrow and I thought three to one was definitely not a bad price to be getting stuck into there it might be a bit of a market mover as we get nearer post time so that's the first one there in the one o'clock we go to the 135 now Paul Nichols has got a dead cert favorite at the moment or anyway with bookmakers anyway it's a dead cert but I'm not going for um, that Paul Nichols horse its name escapes me but I'm going for a horse called Sam Brown here now he's a second favorite in the bookmakers um, odds at the moment now he's got some very good bumper form he's already won at Wincanton over heavy ground in that bumper but then he went up and I believe he won at Huntington so he's got some very good strong bumper form beating the likes of 
horses from um, Alan King's yard. Uh, Talk is cheap that's gone on to win some hurdles and also a handy Nicky Henderson horse. So he's beaten some good horses along the way in his bumper form and they've worked out really well. And I thought 6-4 to four with Anthony Honeyball and Tom Scudamore teaming up, I thought 6-4 to four wasn't a bad price really to be getting stuck into. So that's going to be my selection in the 135 there for you if you fancy that one. Now the next race is the 210. And I thought this was probably the most trickiest on the card uh, for tomorrow to uh, sift through and think what will uh, run well or even win, really. Now, I've gone for Gold Mountain here, but there are probably about three or four others that have got some good, strong claims. Gold Mountain is trained by Alexandra Dunn, and Richie McLennan will be taking the ride tomorrow. Now, this horse has probably got the best chase form in the race. Some people are saying it might want further, but I don't think it will. I think it can cope with this distance. It's already notched up one chase win at Taunton. I thought 8 to 1 wasn't a bad price and could definitely make the frame. Maybe that's the horse to back each way or maybe back in a place. So um, that's the selection in the 210 there. We then go to the 245, the next uh, race on the card. And surprise, surprise, we go for a Nichols horse here in Mr. Mix. Harry Cobden takes the ride tomorrow. He's got a prolific strike rate at this uh, course already. So young in his career. He could be definitely a champion jockey in the making one day. I really like Harry Cobden as a jockey. He's a local favourite as well at the course. Now, Mr. Mix finished third last time out on a reappearance for the season at Chepstow behind a very good handy horse called Maya Storm, uh, which was trained by Alan King. And I think it might need that run. It's still probably the most scopiest and unexposed sort out of all these horses tomorrow. I believe it's also the highest rated as well. And I thought if it's anything like that tomorrow, I thought at five to two, it should be turning up and winning this race. So I'm going for that one there in the 245. We then go to the 320. And I'm going for a horse called Thunder here. Well, it's kind of like Thunder, but it's called Thunder. It's trained by uh, Gary Moore. And he's using a conditional jockey in William Clark tomorrow, taking £10 off on this horse. Now, it won on its hurdle debut at Huntington last time, beating a horse called Jumping Jack, which the main market favourite, risk and roll of um, Paul Nichols won at Kempton last weekend but I think he was very lucky to win that race and I think if Jumping Jack hadn't been wandering around he would have easily closed up in the end if he could keep a good straight focus and I thought Thunder really was the one to beat in this race tomorrow and maybe the one that bookmakers start to get shorter with as we progress to post time in that race tomorrow. So Thunder is the selection in the 320. We then go to the 355. I'm going for the Nichols horse in this one called Diamond Guy. Um, it's like I said, trained by Paul Nichols, and tomorrow um, Harry Cobden will be taking the ride for this one now. He did have a short priced favourite in this kind of race last time out in the maiden hurdle on the first race at Wincant, and it was called Dan's uh, Levent or something like that. But anyway, it failed to live up to expectations, and it was the Colin Tizard runner, uh, White Moon, that won that race, and quite impressive style in the end. It's kind of, a, could be a little bit like that tomorrow, a bit of a local flavour going on. I know that Tizard's got a couple of... Um, Raiders in this uh, race looking to do well, but I thought that maybe Diamond Guy with his already course and distance win as a bumper could definitely progress and come on well, and that was probably the most likeliest winner I thought in the race, and it's 7-4 to at the moment, so I know a lot of these are kind of favourites, but I think a lot of them are solid favourites as well, and there's a few horses in there that are kind of like the second favourites as well that I think are more preferable for me anyway. But anyway, the last selection, last but not least, in the lucky last, they always call it, the 430, it's going to be the nap out of uh, the Win C C Canton card for me tomorrow. It's Ivers Queen, trained by Colin Tizard, and uh, conditional jockey James Byrne, who's been riding very well. He's going to be riding for Nicky Henderson soon. Takes seven pounds off tomorrow. Good jockey book in there. He ran not too badly last time out at uh, Wynn Canton, finishing fourth in a higher grade of race and nearly could have done all right that day. It's currently three to one with bookmakers at the moment. I thought this race was definitely a lot easier tomorrow and even though it has found it hard to win in its career, it's normally pretty consistent and I thought this was quite an easy opportunity for it to win tomorrow. I could see this one storming home tomorrow. So that's going to be the nap at Wynn Canton there tomorrow. So they're my uh, 
selections for Win Canton tomorrow. Let us know what you think there. I also promised you two selections from Aintree tomorrow. In the 150, the Veterans uh, Race, I'm going for Gasline Boy. Did okay for me in the Grand National this year. I backed it at 80-1 to 1 each way. So I got not a bad price there. We're finishing the top five, so made a bit of profit out of that one. But I thought Gasline Boy, trained by Ian Williams, who's been in great form his stable recently. Robert Dunn takes the ride. I thought probably out of all the old horses, this was probably the most consistent. I can see it running another good race tomorrow, like Saint Tree. And I thought 13 to 2. That wasn't a bad uh, horse there to make the each way possibility there and make the frame so that's the selection in the veteran chase and i'm also putting up bags groove in the 225 aintree trained by harry fry and will be ridden by Noel feely probably was a bit too uh, held back last time at chepstow and it also probably needed the run but it wasn't far beaten in that race and i thought seven and one was a very easy to back price in that race so that's the two selections at aintree there also as well I do have that big thing that I will mention on Monday, um, what I'm going to be doing on Tuesday anyway, um, that big announcement I said, uh, which we'll be doing on the channel, it's something really exciting I think that will be taking us to the next level, or trying to get me more noticed anyway, so uh, watch out for that one. So yeah, that's all I've got to say really, hopefully I can have a good day tomorrow at Wind Canton. Follow us throughout the day, like I said, on Facebook and on Twitter. You can also follow me at LuckyLoaders15 on Twitter as well. Please subscribe to the channel for more horse racing daily predictions. Also as well, gamble responsibly. Hopefully uh, you don't lose too much uh, money from my selections and hopefully there can be some winners tomorrow. So yeah, that's all I've got to say. Hopefully we can have a good afternoon tomorrow and we'll be seeing you soon.